Okay, what I'm going to show here is how to create a flash animation using symbols, pivot points, the transform tool, keyframes, and uh, the onion skin tool. So, to start off, I've created a box. Uh, I'm going to make a new layer so I'm not on the same layer as this box. I want to make something fall off this box. In fact, let me show you where I'm going just so you can follow better. If I hit play on this animation, you can see the ball hits the bottle, the bottle falls off the table, and bounces on the ground. So that's kind of where I'm going. Okay, so how would you do that? So I'm going to go back to this example. We've got our box, and uh, we need something to fall off of it, so I'm going to go to my rectangle tool and do something real quick. And let's just change the colors. And let's make this something else. Okay. Let's make a symbol out of that. Modify, convert to symbol, or F8. And we'll call this thing bottle. And I'm using a movie, tip, movie clip symbol for this. And let's just move it down a little bit so it starts in the right place. And go to our next frame. I'm going to frame 3. And I'm going to hit F6, which copies the previous keyframe. But look, our, our box went away. So I'm going to go back to this layer where our box is and go to, let's say, frame 20 and just hit F5, which just keeps that box visible for us. And I'll go ahead and lock that layer. Back to layer 2, and we'll just go ahead and torque this thing a little bit. And let's zoom in a little bit, too, so you can really see this clearly. Trans free transform tool. Grab a corner and start to rotate. And you can see that it's rotating off of its own centroid, its own pivot point, which happens to be by default in the center, which isn't really good. Because what I want it to do is rotate off this little corner, which is where it would naturally rotate if a ball hit it on this side, right? So I'm going to press and drag with my left mouse button and move that pivot point down to where it should be. And just go ahead and tilt this a little bit as if a ball had hit it. And let's go to frame 5, hit F6 to copy the keyframe, and just tilt it a little bit more. And just notice where the centroid is. That's the real center of this mass. And it's almost directly over the pivot point now, which means that thing is going to fall, or else it's just going to hang there and balance a little bit and then go either way. So what I'm going to do is there's still a little bit of inertia on this thing. I'll hit F6. It's going over. And it might start a little bit slowly, but it's going to pick up speed. And now it's getting to where I'm kind of guessing about what I've done before, so I have to scrub the timeline and and uh, not really sure if that's going to work. So what I'm going to do is turn on a tool called Onion Skin. Now Onion Skin's turned on. I'm going to drag my timeline again. Let's go to our last frame. And I just want to show you how Onion Skin works. I can grab this left bracket and drag it back a few frames. And I usually take the right bracket and drag it to just before or just after my current frame. So now I can see into the past. And uh, I'll go to my next frame. That should be frame 11. Hit F6. And now I can make this thing accelerate. And I can mimic what gravity is really going to do by uh, because I can see the previous frames. I see I want a bigger gulf there because gravity will, will start to tug on that. It will accelerate. And F6. And again, a real strong acceleration here. You can see that the distance is getting bigger and bigger as this thing falls. And uh, the next point, F6 again, bring it down. And this time we're starting to go through the table, which wouldn't really happen, would it? So what I'm going to do is hit my arrow keys and move this up. And it's also going to probably fly out. Its bottom is going to kick up out of it, out of there. It's going to lose its uh, foundation. And let's see. Let me just move this for a second so you can see the next few steps. Okay, so we don't want our object in this box to have an interference. We don't want one object to be able to go through the other object. It would be violating the, one of the most basic laws of physics. So I just want it to touch, though. I don't want it to float. So next frame, F6. Rotate it again. And we don't want it to go through. And in fact, it'll probably kick out. 
And what we've got is some inertia that's moving this direction. And so we have centrifugal force pushing it out. So this thing's going to actually fly out to the right. It's not going to just drop down. So in fact, it would probably go a little bit further to the right and a little bit further down. And next frame, F6. It's going to continue to torque around and it's going to continue to go out and it's going to start to drop. And gravity is going to push on it even more. So if we go back to our original, Oh, I should say this also. Now I can show it here. If I go back here and hit play, that ball is hitting on its top. So what I'm going to have to do and what I've done is I've changed the pivot point. Let's go here so I can show you this. See the pivot point was right here so it can turn over on its corner on the bottom. If I go to where it hits, notice that I've moved the pivot point to that little corner. Let me zoom in for you. So there's the new pivot point so that it can be realistic when it bounces off again and I can rotate it and it'll work. Let me just back off a little bit so you can see something else. Notice also that it, it picks up speed as it drops but then it slows down as it comes back up into this bounce. So at the height of the bounce you see the pictures closer and closer together, the frames, and then they spread out again as it picks up speed again. So those are some things that might help you with your animations. I would say it's good practice to work on something simple like balls and uh, things falling off of other things and it'll help your more complex animations down the road. And I guess we could take a quick look at this ball too. The ball hits, bounces off, bounces a few times, then rolls a little bit and stops. I'll just play that one more time. So the tools we used, tra the free transform tool, the pivot point adjustment, uh, onion skin, making symbols because they're easier to manage, and uh, keyframes, and mostly just F6, and then moving these brackets as necessary.